not just covid for humans but panama for bananas so let's understand how this banana banana crop is on the verge of extinction let's first focus on the history of banana now banana is one of the oldest domesticated crops in the world and it started from two wild varieties in the regions of southeast asia and slowly and gradually you had the new varieties that were released and after nearly 10000 mutations different mutations that occurred you had the seedless bananas that came into existence now they can either grow uh, through seeds or they can grow as suckers so they are the two there are the two methods through which banana crop can actually grow if we focus on the proportion of the crops across globe you have 65% of the crop which is cavendish 20% which is traditional and nearly 320 local varieties that are seen on a small scale it is one of the most consumed and most traded fruit among all the fruits and uh, most of the plantations are now moving towards genetically identical clones to be uh, devised because of the recent invasion of the panama disease that has been witnessed now this disease basically is caused by a fungus and it slowly and gradually wilts the plant and dries the plant and uh, when the farmer is investing a lot of money growing banana plantations and a disease like this can wipe off the complete plantation banana itself is a dollar 25 billion industry across globe and a significant proportion of people are tied with this banana industry you have nearly 400 million people uh, for whom banana is one of the major uh, diets and provides all the major nutrients in small and trace amounts including vitamins and minerals now uh, we need to understand potassium is one of the major uh, elements that is being derived also we focus on how the panama disease is spread so uh, when this all started it was mainly from the region of taiwan 50 years back when the first trace was seen uh, however in the history we have quotes of 1800s as well where panama disease was there but in the recent time it started with taiwan and slowly and gradually spread to the regions of asia australia uh, uh, and the remaining parts of the world so australia when it was first seen in 2018 they started by security so they did not allow any foreign soil to enter into the land of australia and every of the farm that was infested was quarantined and isolated also there were strict measures taken in colombia because colombia is one of the fourth largest exporters of banana and uh, considering this disease is spread that was seen only in one of the regions of la gujaria it was believed that whole of the colombia must be at high alert as a result a national emergency was declared in the country of colombia and later on you had numerous steps that were taken so this disease as we said is spreads from a fungus but is it is highly potent it is believed that the spore of this fungus can remain in the shoes of the farmers in the farming equipments or any other place and can be there for 40 years one for one spore has a capability to infect one plant and therefore it is highly highly detrimental to the plants also we have seen that some of the species are highly susceptible for example grand nine robusta buswal uh, malbhog raj rambhog are some of the species that are significantly affected there are some species which are uh, highly affected where a significant wilting takes place and breaking of plant is much more quicker however in traditional plants it takes a little while before the results could be seen and the most interesting thing is uh, none of the symptoms can be seen unless and until you have external markers that are there so once the plant starts to wilt and die uh, we are able to understand that this plant is suffering from panama disease and therefore uh, understanding how to curtail this 
uh, spread is again significantly difficult. Uh, so uh, if we talk about the regions of India, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh are the worst hit area. However, in the south, the crops of red banana and nandran are some of the crops which are not affected by uh, the TR4 strain as it is said. However, 80% of the crops are affected by this strain and therefore the spread is wild. We could simply say the spread is much much wild than we can ever imagine. Now what happens when the farmer sees that over the years he has invested so much in the plantation which is a monoculture crop and uh, there has been a significant money going in with lots of biocides, biofungicides going in to protect the plant even still it all turns into vain people are now shifting from banana to alternate crops so that is again one of the threats to the extinction which is adding to the extinction now it was as we said the story comes back from 1870s where a sailor uh, who was called as Don Baker sailed from Jamaica with some of the banana species to the region of Panama and he started the monoculture plantation there but soon this disease and the imprints were seen. So therefore this disease was known as Panama disease. Now most of the Cavendish varieties which are more sweeter and more tastier have been replaced by uh, Gross Michael which is relatively uh, less sweeter variety that is being seen and therefore what now we need to understand is how to curtail this issue. So revival of bananas is something that is very very crucial for agriculturalists across and scientists across the globe. Now in India we are trying to create a biofungicide which would affect the T4 strain and it would curb the growth of the hyphae which could affect the vascular system of the plant and prevent the plant from wilting and dying. So that is known as the trichoma, uh, tri uh, trichoderma EC uh, and therefore uh, we also have bioimmunization which is similar to vaccination that is being done and these are injected into the bioactive components of the uh, plant tissue during the time of tissue culture. However, there have been different strategies adopted by different nations. For example, Philippines is talking about gamma irradiation. China is talking about chemical mutagenesis where you have chemicals, gammas, x-rays that are aimed to bring in random mutations and because of these mutations, the effect of the fungus would go away. Similarly, we have Australia which is trying to have a transgenetic cannabis region that could be uh, crops that could be developed. US is working on gene editing and gene slicing technology we have uk which is trying to uh, bring in gene uh, editing induced gene slicing technique and it could be believed that it could commercially come up in three to four years and therefore it could be one of the markers for protecting a lot of banana species. Now commercial plants, one of the unique things is they are genetically identical. So there is no way that uh, some of the plants would be able to escape from this fungus, others would not be. So uh, the only way through which this could be curtailed or this could be checked as of now by the scientist community is uh, bringing in a change or bringing in a significant mutation. So genetic editing is one of the ways through which this could be uh, taken into account. Now Dole Food Company is one of the leading companies and top banana ex suppliers of the world. Uh, Latin America and the Caribbean region are one of the major producers and Dole Company supplies from this region to the regions of European Union and United States and they are working on a gene editing technology along with the ELO life systems of United States which was found as a platform for uh, development of the uh, traces in the uh, primitive plants that could be seen. So faulty DNA would be remo removed and a new genetic uh, material would be inserted and that would be one of the feasible ways through which uh, the crops could be actually revived. So the whole idea that we are trying to focus is Panama disease has been spreading widely among bananas and that has led to a significant issue of extinction of the crops and therefore uh, numerous efforts are being done in the direction of revival of the crops. We would be bringing in many such interesting topics for you. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.